Hi everyone, welcome to the King Heritage and Cultural Centre. Thanks for joining our video series once again. Today we are exploring how to make natural dyes using ingredients found in nature, your backyard, or even in your refrigerator. Did you know that you can create a dye of almost any colour with leaves, flowers, roots, and nuts? The colours produced with natural dyes are generally a little softer than synthetic dyes and may fade over time, but are very beautiful. First, a bit of history. The early settlers in King Township relied on natural dyes because they were free, accessible, and plentiful. Some examples included black walnuts for black and brown dyes, and also ink, marigold for yellow, and madder root for reddish brown. Imported dyes could be purchased at a local general store, and they included indigo to create blue and logwood for purple. A pinkish red color was made from cochineal, an imported dye made from the bodies of small Mexican insects. Gross, but true. The first synthetic dyes, called aniline dyes, were invented in Britain in the mid-1850s. They produced more saturated, vibrant colors. But synthetic dyes were expensive to purchase and for many years were used sparingly or kept for special occasions. Entire outfits, like the one on the left, that were made in brightly colored fine fabrics were reserved for the wealthy and usually for the city. Naturally dyed homespun was much more practical for work on the farm. Let's talk about how to create the colors of the rainbow using natural dyes. We should mention that many of these dye stuffs can create more than one color depending on the equipment used. Boiling dye in an iron pot, for example, will create a different color than using a tin one. The intensity of the color can also be controlled by the amount of dye stuff and the time that the material was left to soak in the dye. This image shows a handwoven rug made with naturally dyed wool in different shades of the same color. Red. Mataroot creates a reddish brown color while certain berries, roses, and even avocado skins will create pink. Cochineal makes a bright, vibrant pinkish red that like matter is quite long lasting. Orange. Shades of orange and amber were traditionally created with onion skins and other leaves and roots. Orange can also be created with matter root if the dye is made in a tin pot. Carrots can also be used to create orange, but in general, early settlers would not use food to dye with when they could eat it instead. Yellow. Shades of yellow can be created with dandelion flowers, marigolds, lilac twigs, and yarrow. Turmeric makes a beautiful, strong yellow dye. Green. Options for green are plentiful in nature and include grass, carrot leaves, various flowers, sorrel roots, and more. Blue. The best blues were made with indigo and woad, but red cabbage, elderberries, and dogwood bark were also used. Purple. Shades of purple can be created using logwood, daylilies, and dandelion roots, among others. Brown. Brown is a practical color and can be created using a variety of ingredients, including walnut shells, dandelion roots, tea, coffee grounds, acorns, and more. Black. True black is hard to achieve and many natural dyes actually produce dark gray. Shades of gray and black can be created using black walnut shells, logwood, sumac leaves, iris roots, and oak galls. What can be dyed? Natural fibers like wool, silk, flax, cotton, and bamboo will absorb the dye color nicely. Synthetic fibers like acrylic or polyester are not recommended. Generally, unprocessed fibers will take the dye better than fabric, but just work with what you have and what is available to you. A mordant is a substance used as a fixative, or in other words, it helps to set the dye so the color doesn't wash out. Salt, vinegar, and alum are a few common mordants. Salt is usually used for fruit dyes and vinegar is used for vegetable and plant dyes. Some dye stuffs, like avocados, onion skins, and black walnuts contain natural tannins, which act as a mordant and mean you don't need to add one unless you want to change the color. Clean 
water in a clean, non-reactive container like stainless steel, enamel paper, or glass. Add dye stuffs like these onion skins. Bring to a boil and turn down the heat and simmer for one to two hours to extract the color. Add yarn or fabric to the dye and simmer for up to an hour. The length of time will affect the intensity of the color. You can also just add the wool or fabric to lukewarm dye and leave it to soak for a few hours or even overnight, stirring occasionally. Remember, the length of time that you leave the material in the dye bath will affect how intense the color is. And also remember that color will be lighter when it dries by at least a couple of shades. Remove the yarn or fabric from the dye and rinse in cold water. This is best done in a stainless steel sink or outside. Use gloves if available so your hands don't end up the same color as the dye. Hang up outside in the shade to dry. Here you can see the results of my dyeing experiment using avocado skins, onion skins, and mint from the garden. The colors are a little bit different depending on how long the yarn was left in the dye bath to soak. Here are a few more samples um, of some of my experiments. I hope you've enjoyed learning about making dyes from natural ingredients. Remember that the process is not an exact science, so be sure to experiment and have fun. Thanks for watching.